Franklin Delano Roosevelt to solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. FDR assumed the office of president at the depths of the Great Depression in March 1933. In spite of arriving at the White House in a wheelchair due to his battle with polio more than a decade before, his great gift was to project hope and optimism as the nation was staggering under the weight of 25 percent unemployment. President Roosevelt promised prompt vigorous action as he began to turn the mood of the country in his first inaugural address. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. During FDR's first term in office, he took communication with the nation to a whole new level, mastering the political potential of radio with his fireside chats, transforming how a president could get his message out instantaneously to the American people. You have encouraged us with a widespread approval of our purposes. Every ounce of strength, every resource at our command, we have devoted and we are devoting to the end of justifying your confidence. No longer were the nation's newspaper reporters the gatekeepers of news. These chats went past the reporters' filters, directly to the entire nation, convincing them that as capitalism struggled, they need not turn to the extremism of communism or fascism. He made them believers in a third way. While Roosevelt's New Deal programs may not have ended the Great Depression completely, they did put millions of people back to work and lower the unemployment rate to 10%, where it was until the outbreak of World War II in 1941. On December 7, 1941, Japanese forces bombed Pearl Harbor. Roosevelt went directly to Congress to ask them to immediately declare war on the fascist powers and officially join World War II. I ask that the Congress declare a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. World War II involved over 100 million military personnel, making it the most widespread war in history. Over 70 million people were killed, mostly civilians, making it mankind's most deadly conflict. Tensions ran very high throughout the world. In the United States, President Roosevelt ordered the internment of Japanese Americans on the West Coast. In 1945, a very ill Franklin Delano Roosevelt met with Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin at the Yalta Conference. The men discussed the reorganization of war-torn Europe. While some critics charge he was too soft on Stalin and the Soviets, creating conditions that led to the Cold War, others credit Roosevelt for developing the model for the economically vibrant and politically stable Western democracies based on the principles of the New Deal. Roosevelt died in April 1945 before the nation celebrated VE Day and VJ Day. Two million New Yorkers jammed Times Square. It's official. It's all over. It's total victory.
President Roosevelt was spared having to make a controversial decision about dropping a nuclear bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. FDR's presidency created a Democratic Party majority that dominated American politics into the late 1960s. During her time as First Lady and beyond, Eleanor Roosevelt acted as a reformer in both the domestic and foreign arenas. At home, she promoted racial equality, and in world affairs, President Harry Truman appointed her as a U.S. delegate to the United Nations, where she worked to write the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. FDR's lasting legacy was to our democratic system of government and his promotion of his four freedoms. In the future days, which we seek to make secure, we look forward to a world founded upon four essential human freedoms. The first is freedom of speech and expression. The second is freedom of every person to worship God in his own way. The third is freedom from want. The fourth is freedom from fear. 